In the early noughties, there was nothing I liked better than to rock out on a dance floor with my friends and My Chemical Romance were one of my favourite bands. So, all these years later, I've finally given The Umbrella Academy a go, written by the lead singer Gerard Way. <laughs> Now, for some reason, despite this book ticking all the boxes of what I look for in a comic, I never felt the urge to go out and get it. So I actually went for the um, slightly more expensive uh, deluxe edition, which you can see behind me. And I'm so glad I did because the quality of this print, the size of it, really showcases just how wonderful this artwork is. And uh, it was something where there were some splash pages that just completely blew me away and I was so, sat in awe just looking at these pages in this beautiful book. Now I'm a massive fan of Hellboy and that whole mythical creature, you know, old school legend, superhero-y type uh, horror book and this book gave me that warm fuzzy Hellboy feeling where I'm really f reading something where anything could happen you know this is a creator owned book to, to some extent where the there isn't um, the need to protect characters. It's not something that was ever supposed to go on forever, like your Spider-Man or your Batman. And so therefore the element of surprise is there. You've got all of these amazing characters and you just really don't know what's going to happen next. So this book follows seven um, children who were born with special abilities. Um, and what I love about it so much is that you don't actually know straight from the off what their abilities are. There's a lot of mystery kept in the characters so that you are constantly guessing or wondering and that, that sort of curiosity never really goes away uh, in this first volume. Jared Way's first time as a writer um, in these deluxe editions you get a peek behind the curtain where he um, gives a lot of behind the scenes detail and so does Gabriel Barr on the artwork and the designs. What I love about this and Jared Way actually admits it that the superhero theme, the horror theme, the group of children with powers theme is nothing that original but the way it's um, put to you and the way the story is told, it actually still keeps that original sort of feel to it. It doesn't feel like you're reading something you've read before, it just feels like something familiar but a really awesome take on it which I think is so powerful and uh, so unique. Now the cast of characters are really um, extraordinary. A book with so many main characters is always going to need time to build but this book actually does it very well in a short period of time. Now continuing with the Hellboy theme, Mike Magnolia's influence is quite heavy here. I know Gabriel Barr has worked with him on some of the side projects of Hellboy in the past um, and his art style is gorgeous. It is beautiful. This is a book that every comic book fan, every superhero fan, especially if you're a fan of horror and that sort of uh, dark element to the sort of mystic arts and things like that, you should definitely get this book. You know, I'm pleasantly surprised. I was always a massive fan of My Chemical Romance, especially the Black Parade album, which hit, you know, uh, new heights for the band at the time. Um, and Gerard Way kind of disappeared out of, out of uh, the scene for a while. And this is a, it's not a new book. This is an old book. I'm kind of just totally out of tune with it. But the, the fact that he came back with such a hit, uh, you know, he was born to write. And you can tell that in some of his creative uh, song lyrics that he put out, uh, some of the music video ideas that, that they put together as a band. You can tell that they had heavy inspirations from him and he's just born to write. He's a creative um, and he said that whilst, in this book he says that whilst he was on tour, all he would do was doodle and write characters' bios and storylines. He would spend all of his time to the point where it completely overwhelmed him and it helped him with his addiction. Um, you know, he's got a lot of headlines out there that we won't go into today. I'm drawn a lot lately to these independent uh, self-creator books where the creative control isn't you know, spread around a boardroom of people who are thinking about how many Happy Meals they can sell next month. Now obviously there is a usually successful Netflix show of The Umbrella Academy and uh, I know that it's picked up a lot of mainstream interest off the back of that show and I actually have to admit this is one of the first times where I started watching a show that then got me into the comic of it and usually it's the other way around sort of 20 minutes into the episode, I thought, wow, this is such a, this is so wacky and so unique in its own way, yet familiar, that I want to know the source material because I know history, is, you know, like The Walking Dead, the show is going to ruin the book. The show will never live up to the book, so don't start with the show, always start with the source material. So I immediately ordered it and read it 
and then I've now ordered the second volume as well. It's kind of a review in a way. Really, really in love with this series at the moment. Check it out. I might do a more in-depth review of the series on a whole once I've read the whole thing. But for now, it's just me saying that you really need to go out and buy Umbrella Academy, the deluxe edition. Whack that little bit of extra money on it, you won't be disappointed. There's so much cool extras that come with it. And to see it that size and on that quality print, it's just beautiful. It is a real thing that I was proud to actually own and I can't wait to see all three of them lined up. So thanks guys so much for tuning in to Lombos Comics and I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. We will see you again very shortly for another episode, but don't forget to click subscribe so that you don't miss the next review. Cheers guys and see you soon.